2011, number three in the micro uh, free response questions. Okay, pause it, do it yourself, and then we will look at my answer. Okay, so this time um, they tell us that uh, we want to draw the um, market for good X. As you can see, I've already set up my axes, price and quantity. Good X on my uh, is my title here, and um, we're assuming that uh, the production of good X creates a negative externality. So, um, first of all. Um, we're going to draw in uh, our supply and demand. And um, in this case, um, remember, we always assume that supply and demand include, um, you know, all uh, private and uh, public kinds of uh, benefits and costs unless otherwise stated. So uh, in this case, uh, the demand is the same thing as the marginal social benefit. In other words, the private benefits reflected in the demand curve are, are there, and they are the same as the uh, benefits as perceived by society. Um, however, uh, on the uh, supply side of things, we've got a negative externality, and uh, that means that not all of the costs uh, were uh, included here. So supply is the same as um, the marginal social, I'm sorry, private cost, marginal private cost, and then um, the cost to society are actually greater um, or above the supply curve. So here is the marginal uh, social cost. So um, we're supposed to show the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost of good X, labeled as uh, MPC and MSC. We have done that now, so that's the first part of A. Show the market quantity, labeled QM. So the market privately would have produced where um, the marginal um, private cost and um, uh, the marginal social benefit, or supply equals demand, um, were equal to each other. Uh, so that's at QM. And then what is the allocatively efficient quantity labeled QS? So that is always going to be where the marginal social benefit and marginal social cost are equal to each other. And that is at a different location. And so QS is um, less than or to the left of what the, the private market would have produced. And then we need to show the area of dead weight loss. So let me uh, change colors here. We go back to the market quantity and then go straight up um, to the marginal social cost curve. And that means we have this little uh, triangular area um, that we shade to represent dead weight loss. The fact that society um, wants um, a quantity um, smaller than what uh, the market um, has has or will produce. And then in part B, um, it wants to know uh, if we have a lump sum tax, uh, what would happen to the uh, dead weight loss? And um, the thing is that um, a dead, um, a, sorry, a lump sum uh, does not uh, have any impact on the marginal values. Um, it doesn't add um, anything or to, to either marginal benefit or marginal cost. So uh, essentially, uh, the market for good X is, is going to still produce uh, at this market quantity QM. Um, it's just that now, um, as a result of the tax, that they will have less profit. Um, but uh, as far as uh, reducing the deadweight loss, there would be no impact. Um, it would have to be a per unit tax that would change the um, marginal costs uh, in a way as to uh, have an effect on dead weight loss. But um, lump sum 
taxes or lump sum uh, subsidies don't change marginal values and therefore don't change the uh, equilibrium quantities uh, as determined um, in the market. That's it.